All right, guys. So uh, this first item that I am going to um, upcycle is just this plain green uh, planter. It was an edible arrangement um, planter. Now, uh, because it's really a slick surface, what I decided to do is um, I'm going to take it outside and give it a coat of Rust-Oleum uh, Paint and Primer in uh, Satin Espresso. And the reason I chose this color is because I am going to be using milk paint um, on this planter. So this is the color that I want to show through the milk paint is this espresso color. So I'm going to run outside really quick and give this a quick um, coat of this uh, primer paint. Okay, guys. So while um, my uh, flower pot is drying, I wanted to show you this mold. I believe I got this from Timu. And it's a nice mold because it's continuous. So once I unmold this first piece, the next piece will fit right in line with the with this one. And I decided that I wanted to put... Um, a border on the top of my pot. So I'm going to try out this mold. So of course we need our uh, cornstarch to dust it with so that the um, air dry clay doesn't stick. Looking for my little, here it is, my brush. Grab out my clay. I'm probably going to need to mold. There's a lot of um, little detail you know it's pretty um deep so you want to make sure that you get all inside i'm going to put it like a ton and then i can knock out the excess i want to make sure i get in all the crevices okay what i usually do is go <laughs> and knock it all out <laughs> all right so I don't oh there we go now you can see a little better so now I'm gonna get my clay and I am going to I did not have this covered tightly apparently and some of it is getting hard all right, so I'm just going to start pressing the clay and pushing it in and just moving on down the mold. At first, it doesn't want to stick in there good because, of course, we have cornstarch, but I just put a lot and then I take a blade and run it across the top and slice off all the excess. I just want to make sure that it's in there really well. So that's what it looks like, but this is what I'm going to do. Then I take my brayer and I just roll over the top. I just pulled it out. Let me fix it. Sorry, guys. It's because of the cornstarch. Push it back in there. Okay. All right. And then I will take my... I have a blade, a straight blade, and I am going to shave off the top of the clay so that it's even with the mold. That's what it looks like. And now I am going to kind of pull at it and flex it to loosen the clay a little bit. And then I'm going to set it down and I'm going to roll the mold. And here is our first mold. So I'm going to make uh, probably two or three more of these. Okay, guys. So our um, pot is dry. And, of course, I uh, 
when I turned it upside down to paint the bottom, um, it took off a little bit of the paint on the rim, but you're not even going to notice that. All right, now what I want to do is put on my, my border. So I'm going to lay my pot like that. And actually, where is my, um, here it is. All right. So I have my triple thick glue. And I'm going to squirt some on here. And then I'm going to take my, where's my paintbrush that I use? This one will be fine. And I'm going to spread out my glue covering the whole back of the mold, making sure to get the edges because that's usually where they want to not stick is the edges. But you don't want a ton of glue because you don't want it oozing out everywhere either. So, okay. So now I'm going to take this. Wait, let me get this. And I'm going to lay it right across the top. Trying to make it even with, um, with the rim. And then I'm gently going to press it into place. Very gently. All over, making sure all of your edges are adhering to the pot. Okay, now as I said... These are interlocking, so this next piece here will fit right into there. So I'm going to set the pot up for a second till I can get this next one on here. Put some more glue. Oh, come on now, enough of those nasty noises. <laughs> of course, I'm the only one that thinks that because I have a sick mind. And I put these on when they are wet. I don't want them, I don't want to put them on when they're dry because then I can't form them to the shape of the pot. I did a mold with you one other time on the uh, chair that I did. Okay, now I'm going to, I'm going to do it like this. Make sure I have it all the way up against the second one. Look at that. Make sure I have it even and press it into place. Sometimes the clay cracks and, you know, you just have to push it back together. And you definitely want to, you know, wipe off the excess glue before it dries. But I want to get these pieces on first and then I will go back and um, take off the excess glue. Oh, I hope I might have to make an, a, another small piece to fit. All right, so this one will go here. Of course, I, that's just my luck. It's amazing what you can do with some paint and some molds. Whoops, get out of there. I don't know what that is. Got too much glue on this one, so I'm going to wipe some off. Okay. 
Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Slide it on over, move it up. Okay, I just have to do one more small piece right here. All right, so here is my last piece. Need a little more glue. Okay, and then this is going to go right on here. Oh, perfect. Look at that, guys. Whoops. Have to be a little more gentle. I'm, I'm too heavy-handed sometimes. All right, so there is our border. Look at that. Now, I'm going to go around and clean the glue, extra glue off. And then, when I'm done with that, we'll come back and we're going to start painting this. Um, I just let the molds uh, sit for maybe 10 minutes once I put them on and then I start painting and I like to paint them when they're wet because it reduces cracking. Just a quick note to be sure after you handle this uh, air dry clay and you're done make sure to wash your hands off before you handle your piece or you will have a hot mess. I learned that the hard way. Okay, guys, I decided that I wanted to add a couple of um, birds to my pot. So I have this IOD mold. It's called Bird Song. And I am going to cast a couple of birds out of here. There are several different ones that you can pick from. But I need something smaller so that it fits underneath my border. So I think... I think I'm either going to do this one or this one. I have to see which one, how, whoops, how it fits. So let me get my clay and my cornstarch and my paintbrush. Now, IOD molds have this micro rim which um, makes it easy for you to get a nice clean edge. But I still use my, my blade to, uh, to take out the, or to shave off the excess clay. Like you can, you can push it in the mold like this, right? And then you can come like this and scrape it off with your fingers and get a clean edge. Like, see how it, see how that's coming off? I know it's hard for you guys to see, but, um, I guess once you get the hang of doing it that way, it's, it's easy, but I just prefer to, to get the excess clay off with my blade. I just feel like it's easier and you don't have all this excess clay in between your your spaces or whatever. So, um, but anyways, so let's unmold this one and see if it'll fit on on the spot that I want. And again, you just flex the mold, and it comes right out. Look how pretty that is. See if it's going to fit down here. I feel like, I feel like it'll fit, but I feel like it's a little bit too big. So I think I'm going to go with this, um, the smaller one. So let me dust this one here. All 
right, let's see how this one comes out. Of course, I had a lot of clay in there, so it makes it harder to um, scrape the clay off. But if you don't have a ton of clay on, then you can use that micro rim to your advantage. There, see? All right. Just making sure it's even. All right, let's give it a flex. Hang on, guys. <laughs> okay. All right, so there it is. That's the smaller one. And I think this is going to fit perfectly. So I'm going to mold another one for the other side. Okay, guys. So today I am going to paint this um, with milk paint. And it's Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. And the color is called Flower Sack. So again, uh, milk paint is equal parts uh, paint powder with equal parts water. So I'm going to add... have much in here so I'm gonna add one that's probably about three tablespoons worth if I could get at it all hang on guys guess what this is what I'm gonna do <laughs> all right Okay, I'm going to take an, the same size cup and pour the same amount of water in it and then pour it in there. Because <laughs> I couldn't get all the paint out with my measuring spoons. So I'm going to take my water and I'm going to measure it equally with the paint. And that looks about right. And I'm just going to pour this into here and then I'm going to mix it really well for a couple of minutes make sure everything is mixed really well make sure I get in the grooves of the cup on the bottom so I'm going to mix this and then I'm going to set it aside to thicken up it can take up to 10 minutes all right, guys, so my milk paint has not thickened up as much as I would have liked it to, uh, probably because I probably put too much water, but that just means I'll have to put more coats on. It's usually thicker than this, but it is what it is, and it'll still work, but it just takes more work. So make sure that after you set it aside for 10 minutes that you come back and stir it really well before you start um, painting. See, there's pieces. There we go. All right. So we shall get started. I'm just going to grab this brush here. And I guess I'm just, I have to be careful how I hold it because I do have the, um, you know, the molds on here. So you want to use a soft brush and, you know, just start painting and make sure that you get um, all of your uh, molds painted along with your planter. guess I'm just going to go around. I'll do the planter first. And, you know, of course, putting the molds on, it does, you know, it's more work as far as painting goes, but it's well worth it for the end result because you have turned a blah, you know, planter, boring planter into something beautiful. 
I can't wait to, to see how this comes out when I'm done. I'm like really excited about it. So I'm gonna continue to paint and uh, let you listen to some music. Okay guys, I just thought of something. I have never used milk paint on air dry clay. So I don't know if I'm able to do that or not, but I did it. So we'll have to see how it turns out. Um, all right, so I have the first coat of milk paint on here and I am now going to do the second coat just on the pot. Okay, guys, I just want to show you the lovely crackles that we are getting with this, with this milk paint. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be fantastic. So I'm just going to continue to add more paint. And like I said, drying in between the layers with my heat gun until I'm satisfied with, um, with the coverage. Okay, guys, so here is uh, my pot. And as you could see, there is all of this amazing crackle going on. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to save all of this crackle and chippiness, but I don't want the paint to, I don't want it to actually chip off. So what I did is I took this outside and I gave it uh, two coats of Weather Defense Spray, which I will link in the description box. But this is, this is what it is. That way it will stop uh, any chipping of the paint. Okay? Now, the inside doesn't look all that great. I actually may uh, go back and paint the inside of the pot with some uh, fusion mineral paint with the sealer in it, um, which is probably, that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. So there won't be any of that crackle stuff on the inside, but who cares? You're not going to see it. Okay. So my final step to complete this project is to add, I'm going to add some black wax, you guys, and it is going to bring out all of the details of the uh, our border and our bird and all of this crackle. Oh boy, I cannot wait to put this wax on here. Let me pull out my black my black wax brush. Y'all, I bought all these wax brushes off of Amazon. Um, I will put a link in the description for. I got a set of three of them, I think it was. So, all right. Let's start adding some wax. You just, you want to make sure you get it into all of your details. Then I'm going to take a shop towel and wipe it back. Oh, this is going to look amazing. Oh, boy. All right. Let me finish waxing, guys. All right, guys, here is a look at our finished planter. 
Oh my word, does this not look like an old, old planter that has been outside for ages and ages? Oh my gosh. I love, love how this came out. Oh, and I just want to give a shout out to Ginger Chick Rehab because I have learned a lot from her as far as using milk paint and sealing it so that it doesn't chip off. And so if y'all are not familiar with Ginger Chick Rehab, you have to check out her channel. Uh, I will leave the link for it in the description box. Oh, I love it. All right, project number two is this, remember this shelf I got, guys? So the first step in this next project is to clean this up because it is filthy. So I have a bucket here with some uh, Dawn dish soap and some hot water, and we are going to wipe this baby down. All right, now that we've got it all washed up and dried, I am going to um, sand this just to scuff up the surface so that my paint will stick because this does have a gloss to it. Uh, so I am going to sand uh, as much of this as I can and then I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to give it two coats of my... Um, my spray shellac. Reason being is we have just wood here and then we have a painted surface here and we want everything to be evened out. So that's why I will be spraying it with um, a couple coats of shellac before I put my first coat of paint on it. All right, now I'm just going to take a sheet of sandpaper by hand and go over the spots that I couldn't do with my uh, sander. Like I said, I'm just trying to get rid of the gloss on there. Uh, Okay, so now I am going to wipe it down again with my hot soapy water. Get all of the sanding dust off of it. All right, so this has uh, been sprayed with two coats of shellac, and it is now completely dry. 
So what I've decided to do with this is on the back here where uh, the beadboard is, back here, I have chosen some beautiful uh, scrapbook paper that I'm going to put on the back wall of this shelf. So with that being said, um, I want to match the color of the scrapbooking paper with the rest of the shelf. So I am going to be painting it in Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Plaster. Now, this is the paint that has uh, your primer and sealer all in one. Uh, so once I paint this, I will not have to put a sealer on it unless, of course, I uh, put transfers on. If I add transfers on top of the paint, I will still have to seal in my transfers. So I am going to start off by... This is going to take at least two coats um, of paint because it's such a dark color. All right, so while the paint's, the first coat of paint's dried, I wanted to show you the um, the scrapbook paper that I'm going to be putting on the back of the um, shelf. Uh, there is another piece that goes on the bottom, but I can only hold two pieces at a time. <laughs> but I just wanted to give you an idea of the color scheme. Okay, guys, it did take three coats to cover that blue. Uh, but now we are ready to add our scrapbooking paper to the back of our uh, shelf. And it's going to look amazing. I can't wait to get this on here. So just so you know, I usually use a glue stick for scrapbook paper. Yes, indeed. So that's what I'm going to do for this one. So let me grab out my glue stick and let me get my papers here. Okay, I'm going to step them on my chair here. And I'm going to move this down so that I have some place to spread out my um my glue. So, ooh, okay. So it's just uh, an extra strength Elmer's glue stick. And I always start around the outer perimeter. Make sure that the edges, I got the edges really well. And then I will fill in. I know you can't see but I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right. Now I'm going to place it down. Make sure I got it. Exactly where it's supposed to be and then I'm gonna hold on make sure I don't have wrinkles I'm gonna take my brayer and I'm gonna just roll over it being careful not to scrape up against my edges of my shell because I don't want to don't want to um, scrape off the paint all right so this is what we have so far okay 
Now I'm going to go ahead and put this piece Uh, I think it's this one here. Yep, that should do it. All right, let me put on my glue stick. You could uh, put this on with Mod Podge as well. This is just easier to me. So that's what I'm going to do, whatever is easier. There we go. Okay, I'm going to continue and do my other back wall, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, guys, this is what we have thus far. Now, I'm not sure if I want to do anything else to this or not. I think it looks beautiful just the way it is. Um, I was thinking I may add some molds uh, maybe to the sides. Um. But for right now, I think, I think, you know, it's beautiful just the way it is. So for now, I think I may just leave it be. Sometimes less is more. I hope you enjoyed this project. I have this awesome piece of Halloween rice paper. And I think I have just enough to cover these wood coasters that I purchased. It was either at Goodwill or Salvation Army. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the wood on here, just the top. I'm going to paint it white because since I am going to be decoupaging, some rice paper on top. I want the, this to be white so that you can really see my, my rice paper. Um, if, if I were to leave it this color, I mean, I could, but I just feel like the background needs to be white under the decoupage paper. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give these just, I think, one coat of white uh, chalk paint. Okay, so now that I have these all painted, I am going to cut off this uh, white border on here so I can measure correctly. Um, if you are interested in this particular paper, here is the, it is by Decoupage Central. And there is the um, number. I will list it in the description box if, if they still have it. Decoupage Central. There's a lot of different places that I get my, my rice paper from. So, um, it just depends. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little bit hanging over the edge so that I can file it down. So I'm just kind of making a crease and then I will cut it out.
So this will be the first one. And then I'm just going to kind of move along here. I'm hoping I can get six, six out of this. If not, I'll just do a set of four. Okay, where's the crease? Let me do it from this side. Sometimes it's hard to see on the other side. So there's two. All right, I'm going to be using Pink Couture's Decoupage Medium in matte. I just wanted to try it to see how I liked it, and I like it. All right, let me get this back where I need it. Okay, so I'm going to lift up one side, holding the other side down with this, with this hand. I'm going to hold this side down and then lift up this corner and apply a nice even layer of my decoupage medium and then I am going to put that and then I'm going to switch switch it and do this side And I'm going to take my brayer and I'm going to roll over it to make sure that everything is adhered really well. And then I will go over the top with a coat of the decoupage. And then once it's completely dry, I will uh, sand off the excess paper around the um, edges. All right, as you can see, I came up a little bit short on this edge. So I kept this piece of the paper and what I'm going to do is I am going to set it on here. I'm going to I'm going to try and match it the best I can, but it's going to be difficult and fill in that little bit of um that I'm missing. And I'm just going to 
stick it on there. Oh, for crying out loud. Doesn't want to stick. Okay. All right. So I'm going to let that, I'm going to let it dry just like that, and then I'll sand off the excess paper. Okay, guys, so it's the next morning, and I let these coasters dry overnight. And then what I did is I took each one with my little finger sander, and I, in a downward motion, I went around all the edges and got off the extra decoupage paper. Then I took some of the Tim Holtz Oxide, Distress Oxide inks, and went around all the edges on the coasters just to, to blend in the black, okay? So now all I'm gonna do is I am gonna put a coat of poly uh, acrylic sealer on the tops of these to make them safe for use. So let's get to it. I did put one coat of polycrylic um, sealer on them, and then I decided to go ahead and put a second protective coat on, coat on, and I used Mod Podge Gloss, and I put one coat of this on top of the polycrylic, so now they'll be um, super protected and um, able to be used. Thank you. 